Let us go through the, let's do a, a quick code review of how I implemented the heap. Um, so th the basic idea is that we're going to use a hash table to represent the heap. And in our uh, keys, we're going to have a special data structure um, that is just going to be an integer, but we're going to wrap it inside a struct as well. And in our following video, we're going to motivate why we always want to have structs wrapping our values, um, as that helps us do um, bet more defensive code, uh, reduce errors, and make them more identifiable. <coughs> so we're going to have a structure, a struct for heaps. Um, and when we do empty, the constant empty heap is just a heap that contains uh, an empty hash table. A handle, which is what we use to represent a reference, is a struct that contains an integer, and we're going to say that it's uh, the field called the identifier ID. And then we're going to have a structure that represents a mutable effect, which is just a pair uh, where we're going to have in the first field state, that's where we're going to store our heap, and the result is where we're going to store our handle. But we're actually going to use this EFF for other things, as you will see in future lessons. <coughs> so next we have heapalock. So let's try to discuss what's going on here, or try to understand it. So heap allocation does two things. It has a heap and a value. What do we do? First, we take the data, so the hash table, from the heap. Then what we need to do is we need to create a new handle that is unique. And the way we're doing this is by creating a new um, number that is always the biggest number is in the heap, and we're doing it continuously. So you can think that the first element is going to have an ID of 0, the second value being allocated is going to have an ID of 1, the third is going to be an ID of 2, and so on. Um, as you can see here, we don't have code for removing elements from the heap. Uh, if we did do that, then we would have to be more careful in how would we generate new identifiers. For now, it's enough to just use hash count, and that will give us always the new increasing heap. And as you might imagine, uh, because we have no way of deleting elements from the heap, it just grows unbounded, and it could be a problem. And in fact, we're going to talk a bit about in the future how we could handle this or mitigate this problem. Okay, so this uh, second line computes the next unique identifier, and it does so by using hash count. And uh, in the next line, what we're doing is we're constructing the new heap. So what are we storing in the new heap? We're taking the old hash table that represented the old heap, and we're putting there the new ID and assigning to the new ID, that's going to be the key. The value is going to be the value passed in parameter. Right? So we just add a new pair, new ID to V, in the hash table data, and we wrap it in a heap. So we are ready to return the final value. What do we return? We have to return the new heap as the new state, and as the field result, we're going to return the new handle. This is what this code is doing. So let's recap it. What it does, it unpacks the hash table from the heap, it computes a new identifier, it's going to be the new handle, and then it creates a new heap that where we put the new ID and associate it to the new value that is being passed. And finally, we return an, an effect that holds the new heap and the new identifier. So what does heap get do? Well, heap get is very simple. Basically, it gets the hash table from the heap and then performs a hash ref, which just does a lookup on the hash table. Finally, we define uh, heap put. So what does heap put do? First thing we do is we, we need to add a new pair Q of V, right? So what we do, we take the hash table from the heap and first thing we do is we check if the key is defined in the hash table. If it is, we then perform a, heat, a hash set 
on the hash table where we set the key value. And if the key is not defined, we just throw an error. So we don't silently update. We actively check if the key is defined, and if it's not, we throw an error so that we have a bit better um, error input. And that's basically it. But for the sake of uh, homework five, what we really care about is just how to use it, and that is discussed in the previous video.